In this week's Tuesday tutorial, I want to take a look at how to remove things using the clone stamp tool and how to control that tool using the clone source panel. I'm Dave Cross. By now, it's pretty clear that there's always multiple ways to do things in Photoshop and removing things by retouching is no different. We could use the spot healing brush, the healing brush, the patch tool. All those tools are very useful because they're pretty automatic. But there are lots of times where the clone stamp tool is still the best tool for the job, especially when you see some of the options you have in the clone source panel to affect the way that this tool works. Now, first thing I'll say is whenever we say remove something from a photograph, really what we mean is cover it up to make it look like it wasn't there by taking some other information in effect pasting it on top of it and that's what the clone stamp tool allows us to do by painting it's really the clone painting tool even though it's called the clone stamp tool I would also recommend that you take a hard look at not retouching right on your photograph but doing a retouching on a separate layer and the reason for that is quite simple often I'll see people do a whole bunch of retouching they do a whole bunch of cloning and then they realize back at the first clone they did, they make a mistake, but because it's on the background layer, there's really no undo other than stepping backwards through all that work you did. Whereas if you put your cloning on a separate layer, then at the very least, you could always delete that one little part and redo it again on that separate layer. And all it takes is one separate setting that lets you do that. So here's the photograph that I wanna work on. You can see I've got a ballet dancer here. In the background, there's like a trash can and some people on the beach on each side. And I wanna just remove them from the photograph or at least make it look like they're not there. So first step is to add a blank layer and I'm gonna tap the letter S key for my clone stamp and check the settings. And right now it's set to normal, 100% opacity, that's all good. I want it to be aligned, we'll talk about that a little bit later. And here's where I need to tell it, I want you to put the results on the blank layer. And the way we do that is by choosing sample current and below. That means it'll sample from the background layer and put it onto the blank layer. The other thing we'll use during this process, not right away, but eventually is this panel called clone source. So we'll come back and look at this a little bit later. So basically the way the clone sample works is a very simple principle. And that is you have to hold down option or alt on your keyboard click once the way you want to use as your source. In other words, where you're cloning from. I always like to pick something fairly obvious like this line of horizon. Even if I was cloning something down in this area, I would still use this as my reference point because then it'll be easy to line up elsewhere. So option alt, one click, and now you see I have this little preview, which is really great because now it allows me to align things up. I'm gonna zoom in just a hair closer here. And then now you can see with that preview, I can say I want to click right there. And now as I start painting, see how there's two cursors? On the left-hand side is the little plus sign. That's where I'm cloning from. The right-hand side is my brush size, and that's where I'm cloning to. So what that allows me to do is I have to kind of watch two places at once. And now you can see I have removed those people. But actually, that's just a little patch. If I hide that layer, you can see they're just covered up. And I would just repeat that operation. Hold down Option or Alt, click that reference point, then come over here, line up that line of horizon, and start painting. Now, the one thing that I would say you have to do at a certain point is kind of look both ways at once. I have to keep track of where my clone source is over on one side and where I'm painting on the other, because if you go too far, then you'll suddenly notice that you start repeating some of the information you try to remove because it's just cloning over that same information over again. So for example here, remember my clone source is way over there and if I go too far, not that it would make sense in this case, see how I got a little bit of the trash can. So when you first start using the clone stamp tool, you might wanna be poised to hit undo every so often just to remind yourself where you're headed with all this. So I just wanna go over to here and get rid of that. Now with the trash can, I would do exactly the same thing. I'm just gonna paint a little further. So I'm gonna pick an area over here that's giving me lots of room, line up that line of horizon like I did before, and then just start painting up and down. Now what I would probably do is go about that far. I might be able to get the whole thing, but I wanna make sure everything matches nicely. So now I'm gonna come to this side, use that same method to pick my reference point, and then paint over this area. You can see it looks pretty clean and pretty nice. It's pretty obvious. It's done a really good job. And as I mentioned before, if I did make a mistake, 
I can see that all I got here is some patches so I could always erase or do something to this other area over here. Now for my purposes, I'm gonna just undo for a second, step backwards so I can go back to where I was before and show you the reason why we might wanna use the clone source panel. This is where there are some key settings, not the least of which is this option called show overlay. Remember before when I did that option or alt click and I got that preview that you're seeing? Usually that's of benefit. In fact, most of them I'd say it is beneficial to help you line things up. If you're doing a lot of little small work with on like hairs on a background or something, you might find it kind of gets in the way. So you have the option using this clone source panel of turning it off. If you don't see it, it's found under the window menu. Here's this option for show overlay. I turn it off and see now I don't have the overlay, which in this case, frankly, would be a bit of a problem because now I don't know where to click. So there is a keyboard shortcut that you can use if you like keyboard shortcuts, and that is hold down Option or Alt on the Shift key and it'll temporarily show you your preview. So now you can line things up and let, let go of that key and start painting. I don't think that's quite as useful, but it is an option if you find that the overlay that the overlay turned on isn't really helping you that much. The other thing which this clone source panel does, which is quite interesting, and it doesn't really apply in this case, but imagine you had a photo of, say, a building with windows in it, and you were trying to clone the edge of one window on top of the other window, but you noticed they weren't exactly the same. This window was like this, this one was slightly tilted. Well, I can't just clone this one on top of here because it won't match up. But that's where the clone source comes into play. I'm gonna make sure that overlay is still see shown. I'm gonna click that little preview again and make it a little bigger so you can see. Watch what happens now as I take this and say I want to change the angle slightly. See, every time I'm doing it, now it's actually changing the angle, which wouldn't match up in this case, but it'd be perfect for a situation where you needed things to line up. So that's a really nice option that tools like the healing brush, etc., don't do because they're just a straight, I will cover this up kind of situation. Here, if you want to clone some pixels and have them at a different angle or even 90 degrees or whatever you want, that's all possible using this option. I would very strongly recommend that once you have used this option, click this little reset button to put it back to zero. Otherwise, this will haunt you because you'll go to use the clone stamp tool three weeks from now and wonder why everything's slightly off. It's because those settings are still there. The other thing we should talk about very briefly is this align command. I like to have it on the majority of the time, and this is what it means. I'm gonna make my brushes much smaller. So once again, I'm gonna option and alt click over here, line up my line of horizon. As soon as I start to paint, see the distance between the two symbols you see? The plus sign is my source where I'm cloning from. The brush shape is where I'm cloning to. And no matter how many times I stop and start, they're always gonna be that same distance apart. So you always know that no matter where you stop and start, you're always gonna have that same alignment between them. If I had turned off aligned, this is how this would work. Still option or alt click, but now if I start painting here, you see the distance between the cursors, but now if I move over here, see how it's still picking that original source? which some of the time works very nicely. My concern with it, however, is because it's always going back to that original source. If you move too far away, depending on your photo, the colors and tones that you're cloning from and to may not match quite as well. So I would suggest that the majority of the time you probably wanna have a line turned on, but it is an option to turn off. If you find, for example, you're maybe cloning some grass and you really like this area of grass and just keep repeating it over and over again in different areas, that's what that align command does. So again, normally I would have it turned on. I'm gonna have current and below turned on up here so that I can clone to that blank layer. And in my clone source panel, I'm gonna make sure most of the time I have show overlay turned on. You can also lower the opacity a little bit, by the way, if you want, and even change the size. If you wanna change what you're cloning to a smaller size, you can do that as well. Now, as you can see, there are some other options than Clone Source Panel, but those are some ones to get you started. If you're brand new to Photoshop and are struggling with, a bit with the Clone Stamp Tool, don't worry too much. It takes a bit of practice. I would suggest that that's one of the reasons for cloning onto a separate layer so that if you are doing some cloning and then again realize you've made a bit of a mistake early on in the game, you can at least go back and erase that part and go back and do it again. 
So there you go, some basic tips on using the clone stamp tool. Please like this video and if you don't mind sharing with others, that would be great and tune in next Tuesday for another Photoshop tutorial.